Okay, we've done the initial uh, surfacing of these uh, slabs. And uh, the reason I say it's initial is that the important surface, the glue surface, is this face. So once these get ripped down, then I'll take them through the uh, uh, planer one more time just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. There's no snipe or anything on the ends because I need uh, seven feet of, uh, of each uh, strip. So like this will end up on an end or anyway, it'll, it'll end up being out of the the main blank. Uh, to be able to rip these things, uh, you need a straight edge. The first two over here were easy to just run through the joiner. This piece uh, had quite a bit of a crook to it, so I used my uh, track saw to put a straight edge on it, and now it doesn't even need uh, to go through the joiner. It's uh, ready to, uh, to go to the saw and uh, get turned into the first three uh, strips for the uh, glue up. Bottom line is, is that uh, this is a, using oak will end up with a seriously over-engineered uh, blank for this rudder. The oak all by itself, even without the fiberglass, is probably more than strong enough, the uh, fiberglass will end up just further strengthening it and uh, sealing the, the oak off from, uh, from moisture, which is uh, critical whenever you stick wood below the waterline. And uh, so we'll go from there, see what's next. Okay, so we've done our first cut. We're looking to get uh, 18 and a half inches, and I think I'm just under that, so I'll uh, take another slice, because over here on the right side, this gets this is the thin section back in here, and uh, this will have the, the, front no the front nose over in this area. Um, so these are two and a half, two, uh, one and three quarter, and that one's a uh, Actually, should be going that way. That's why it works. So I actually am good. Um, so I'm going to do this as probably two or three sections to glue up my blank. What I'm going to do is I'll draw a center line on each one of these, and uh, make sure I'm pointing here. A center line on the ends that'll match up. Um, uh, to glue them up and as you can see there's a little bit of wow here. It doesn't concern me in the least because uh, when these get glued up uh, the wows are all going to come out and uh, or get compressed and the uh, final uh, Total assembly is what needs to be true and uh, these little wows are just not a big deal at this point no reason to mill unless there's a a flaw in there that would uh, mess up the glue up uh, that would can you know to take away the the glue surface so I'll look for that because I think there is a couple areas that I need to work on but uh, that's where we are tonight part one that looks that's the uh, leftover piece and I'll have to make sure but uh, that's probably a good four or five board feet right there. And tomorrow we'll do some gluing. Okay, I thought I'd take a second to explain how I'm working this uh, uh, balanced rudder out for a J30. The lines on the ends of these pieces show the general direction of the grain. And you can see that in that for the most part they're going up and down and just like in a baseball bat you don't want to impact a piece of wood uh, perpendicular to the flat grain it's more brittle that way by uh, orientating them in this direction we have a better uh, stronger 
uh, arrangement of the wood. This gives you an idea of the additional uh, almost three inches that we're adding to the front of this rudder. And the add is all below this section. So this part up in here will all end up being cut away and then there'll be a transition below the bracket coming down at an angle to match the bottom of the boat. And uh, so all of this area down here will be the additional uh, width that we're adding. Um, and once we do the glue up, these will all be in line. And what I'll be doing soon is drawing a line in the center of each one of these blanks on both ends and then uh, I'm going to glue this up in sections I have probably four pieces uh, these four together these four together and then these are the smaller pieces so I'll probably do those at the very end so essentially I'll, I'll end up with uh, three pieces um, I'm not concerned about the machining on this surface because this is all the uh, material that will be milled away. I am concerned about the interface surfaces so those will all go uh, through the planer uh, for a light uh, pass to get a nice smooth even edge. And uh, here you can see this line is the NACA 12 profile that we're working on. This line is 40 millimeters above this, and so I'll build a fixture that matches that line, and then that's what we'll use to, with the router to mill over the top of the, the rudder on both sides. The other thing that I'll do prior to doing that, uh, I'll mount a straight piece across both ends because once you start milling away one side, then you end up with a, a round surface and it'd be very difficult to, to manage. So I'm going to uh, fix some uh, pieces on both ends so that I have a reference point that's relative to the center line of the, of the blank. Okay, so here's what the... Uh, the reference, uh, I used to work with engineers and they would do all these nice overlays. Well, I'm not an engineer and I don't do CAD CAM, so I have to do things my way, which is uh, just showing uh, the reference and the related parts here. It will be fun doing some of the machining uh, of these parallel surfaces for the brackets. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I have a, a way of managing that as well. And uh, a couple things that were, were that were a little interesting about uh, the the initial milling. Uh, those big slabs uh, that I started with had a lot because they're heavy section. They have a lot of residual stress in them. And even with my uh, what three and a half horsepower motor on my table saw the grain was starting to try to pull back together and pinching off on the uh, the riving knife in the back of the blade and stalling the motor out. I ended up using some wedges to keep the kerfs open um, and I think uh, you could uh, while I have fairly large power tools uh, it would be easy to do the, the milling uh, if you can get the rip cut done uh, either with a, a skill saw on a track like I used uh, or a track saw uh, or a small table saw. I think this is manageable. Planing can be done easily in a 13 inch uh, lunch box type planer could easily handle the smaller pieces once you started uh, uh, milling them down. So I think this is a manageable project for people with with more uh, normal tools than I have but uh, certainly easier with big tools but uh, uh, my deal is I have to justify all this stuff so um, 
certainly the joiner uh, over there is helpful. You're gonna you're gonna want a joiner to be able to get the some nice uh, square edges, and uh, then uh, you know some way to manage chopping these things down. So lots of ways to get those things done. You don't need to have these kinds of tools to get to to uh, to be able to do that. But the main thing is I do think this grain orientation issue is important. Even using oak, which I think is seriously overbuilding this rudder, um, you know, I think you could use a lot of people build rudders uh, cores out of fur. I think that probably would be manageable. Um, I'm just used to working with hardwoods. And one of the advantages of the hardwoods is, is that uh, since you're going to be doing a lot of milling, it's not likely to splinter like you might see with a softwood uh, for a core. Um, the other thing that's an issue, and we'll be really careful with, is even though essentially this is going to be a, a stronger structure, we do create a pretty interesting riser with this uh, shape right here. So uh, I'm going to be real careful with how I fare that and make that transition from this uh, narrower section to the full width down here. So I want to make sure that that's nice and smooth and uh, even so that we don't get uh, uh, a fracture you know, right below this, this bracket. Um, one of the things I've seen a lot of guys are adding carbon and whatnot to the uh, to their rudder blades. I don't see any reason to do that, particularly using the oak, which is incredibly strong in its own right, and the surface uh, glass is what's taking uh, the bulk of the load, not the internal core. But uh, so in this one, with a strong internal core and the glass covering, I think uh, we'll have more than enough strength for the long haul.